continuing our series, uh, which started last week, about uh, redundant data storage. The uniqueness of this feature when we're talking about uh, setting up the ultimate and the cheapest and the, you know, not necessarily the cheapest, but just the best all-round solution for uh, redundant data storage, I really want the community be, to be involved in our final decision. So um, what I want you to do, everybody just jump on to Category5.tv right now, crash our servers completely, all right, just get on over there and bombard our server with, uh, with your, your presence. Um, and if you could just uh, vote in the poll on the left-hand side. So this is since last week's episode. A resounding 36% of our viewers that have voted want to see us work with FreeNAS. Hmm. So that's interesting because we didn't really get into FreeNAS very much last week. No, we didn't. Uh, we can look at that this week if you like. Um, FreeNAS advantages, well, I think the big thing is, is that with what we want to do as of the current release candidate, which I think is 0.7, uh, they and don't hold me on that. I think that's what it is. Uh, they have brought in ZFS, which is the Solaris um, file system, mm. which allows us to do, uh, you know, the m multiple different size hard drives, being able to swap drives out on the fly. Uh, it's redundant. It's great. But so that's the positive with FreeNAS. Also, it's free. FreeNAS, awesome price. I like that. But what's negative about it right now is that it is in release candidate status with the version that has ZFS. So my concern with doing that, and I'm putting this out to the community, pardon me, is that I'm, I'm a bit afraid to trust our data to something that is uh, mm. currently like basically unstable. So not too sure when they're going to be releasing the new version, if you know when it's going to come out of uh, release candidate status. John Roberts says ZFS is still pretty badly supported in the kernel. Oh. Which I would have to say, because it's based on FreeBSD, I would say um, that's my fear, is that it's still not something that I would really trust my data on. So do we go straight to Solaris, where you know that ZFS is well supported because it's their, uh, its son's file system? Fish60 says try NAS Lite. It's cheap and been running for some years. Now, but that's RAID. RAID. And we want to uh, get away from the RAID architecture, which means we're going to be stuck with having uh, drives of all the same type and size. Or at mm -hmm. least, if it's a software RAID, it's going to have to be the same size, or we're going to lose uh, the largest disk as far as the size goes. It's going to be whatever mm -hmm. the smallest disk is. So I want to stay away from RAID in because of the very reason that I have... Uh, Fish 60, I've got a, a bunch of hard drives here. You can see them here, Christy, just sitting around mm -hmm. that are ready to be used as backup drives, but they don't match. I've got oh. a couple of 400 gigs. I've got a couple of 200s and, you know, mm -hmm. just mis mismatched drives mm -hmm. that I want to be able to use in this redundant data storage device. Mm -hmm. So the Drobo is kind of like the way that we want to do it, but the price of the Drobo is what makes us not want to do the Drobo. And what was the rating for the Drobo? We're, we're going to get there. Fish60 says that, uh, that they have all different drives and that the drives are mismatched. So Fish60, with, with that uh, NAS Lite, are you able to actually take advantage of the size, the capacity of each drive? Like if I did, a, for example, a RAID 5, okay, I could have four drives in there and they could be mismatched drives, but if the smallest drive is only 80 gigs, and the biggest drive is a terabyte, I'm still only going to get the 80 gigs out of that terabyte drive. Hmm. Which, to me, would be a complete waste of space. D.L. Marty says Solaris is worse. Really? I can't see that being the case, though. I don't know that I would that maybe, I would. Maybe you can get some more information on that. Well, Sun Solaris is worse. the operating system that, that uses ZFS as its base file system hmm. as of version 10. So we, I would trust that. I mean, it's, it's, their, it's what they're using on the operating system. And, and it does what, what I think that we would like it to do. Uh, Fish60 mentioned that RAID is not necessary, but then what are your options? Like you'd be looking at something equivalent to like a striped array, hmm. in which case you'd have no redundancy. Like a RAID 0, for example. Uh, Fish60 mentioning mirroring, which would mm -hmm. again limit you to the smallest drive's capacity. If you have a mirror of your hard drives and you've got four drives in there, one of them is a terabyte and the rest of them are all 400 gigabytes, 
that terabyte drive, you're only going to get 400 gigabytes on that drive. What I want to be able to do is take a, an array that has four 400 gigabyte drives, say, throw a one terabyte drive in there, and all of a sudden I've got this huge increase in space. Hmm. That's really what I'd like to see. So, yeah, absolutely, Fish60. I appreciate your comments. And anyone else who has any ideas, um, this is what we're here to do, is, is try to establish what is going to be the best option for, uh, for this environment. So to give you an idea, we've got to be able to take these existing hard drives mm -hmm. that we have. They're mismatched. They're not the same brand. They're not the same uh, capacity. They're probably all 7200 RPM. They're all uh, SATA 2, if you will, 3 gigabit uh, SATA. So that matches, and then, uh, and then we'll go from there. So free NAS, not quite sure if I want to go there yet, unless all of a sudden they say, OK, we're out of release candidate status. It is stable. Now you can trust the ZFS implementation. Here we go. Hmm. But when are we going to see that? I'm not sure. Next up was the RAID 5. 